Metabolic stress refers to the buildup of molecules produced by reactions related to energy production within muscle fibers. These molecules are called metabolites, and famous examples include lactate and reactive oxygen species. The accumulation of multiple metabolites is associated with pain and burning sensations during training, so it's certainly logical to feel these pain and burning sensations must shortly be related to hypertrophy. Moreover, the accumulation of metabolites is closely tied to the pump, which is a temporary increase in muscle size, so it's certainly logical to think this plays a role in promoting long-term true hypertrophy. In 2013, Brad Schoenfeld from New York published a comprehensive review of the potential paths by which metabolic stress could promote muscle growth. Five paths were noted. The first is metabolic stress and fatigue directly necessitates more muscle fibers getting recruited and therefore exposed to tension. The second is training that produces high metabolic stress is associated with temporary elevations in anabolic hormones, like growth hormone, IGF-1, and testosterone, and this might promote hypertrophy. The third is that high metabolic stress could increase myokines that promote hypertrophy, like interleukin-6, and decrease myokines that limit muscle growth, like myostatin. The fourth is that reactive oxygen species, a metabolite, could play a role in promoting muscle growth. The fifth and final one is that metabolic stress is closely associated with the pump, as we already know. The pump is swelling of muscle fibers, and this swelling might actually activate certain osmoreceptors that go on to promote growth. Yet, all of these five paths have notable problems. With the first one, about metabolic stress resulting in more muscle fibers getting exposed to tension, it still indicates it's tension per se, not metabolic stress directly, that stimulates hypertrophy. With the second one, we nowadays have several studies consistently finding temporary elevations in anabolic hormones from training are not associated with long-term muscle hypertrophy. The increase in these anabolic hormones may be simply a result of energy usage and be unrelated to signaling hypertrophy. With myokines, the evidence is simply inconsistent on whether metabolic stress truly increases growth-promoting myokines, like interleukin-6, and decreases myokines that limit muscle growth, like myostatin. With the fourth and fifth ones, there exists alternative evidence suggesting reactive oxygen species and fiber swelling may not promote hypertrophy. Further areas of scientific research question the power of metabolic stress to produce hypertrophy. 400 meter running and sprint cycling can produce comparable lactate, a metabolite, increases to weight training. Yet these things do not promote hypertrophy anywhere near as effectively as weight training long term. A 2021 Brazil study had subjects train leg extensions with these variables. One condition rested passively between sets, while another condition restricted their leg with a cuff during the rest intervals which led to greater overall lactate elevations versus the first condition. If lactate has additive effects on hypertrophy, this second condition should see more hypertrophy. Yet quadriceps growth ended up being similar between both conditions after 8 weeks of training. Two other papers had two conditions. One condition involved subjects training normally with sets of reps to failure. The second condition also involved subjects training with sets of reps to failure. But once completing this, they had the trained limb blood flow restricted with a cuff for 3-5 to five minutes. This blood flow restriction trapped the metabolites in the muscle, and if metabolites were additive for hypertrophy, this condition should see more hypertrophy. Yet, after 8 weeks, both studies found muscle growth was not enhanced when applying the blood flow restriction after training. One of the papers actually found it reduced muscle growth in the women's subjects. So crystallizing this section, there's no strong evidence metabolic stress is a potent driver of muscle growth, and it doesn't appear to have additive effects on hypertrophy. Thank you.